This morning we're going to be in Hebrews, the 13th chapter, verses 20 and 21. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Now firstly, we notice that the apostle begins our text, Now the God of peace. He is creating a context in which we will be able to see the nature of the salvation of God and Christ Jesus throughout this verse. Now considering the work of God in redeeming mankind, he could have said the God of mercy. And the scripture and outlining this covenant by the words of the prophet, he said, I will be merciful, merciful to their unrighteousness. But he didn't say that. He could have said the God of grace. Because we know we are saved by grace through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. But he didn't say that. He could say, or the God of love. We love him because he first loved us. Yeah. All of these things would have been true, but he says specifically, the God of peace. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what we are laboring to remember this morning. That therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God Amen. through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is the intended purpose of our salvation, that we may have peace with God. So then, in consideration of salvation, it becomes clear that the Lord has done everything that he has done in accordance with peace. That that has been the intended result, whether or not it appeared that way at the time. It says, That brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Uh, more is involved in this phrase of our text that could be expressed in many meditations. So I want to see just specifically the reasoning behind all of these things. And that was peace. God raised him from the dead. He would not allow him to see corruption. He was loosed from the pains of it because he was not deserving of it. That he may, as our text says, be the great shepherd of the sheep. That he might gather together all things in one in Christ Jesus. This is the intended purpose behind this. It was peace for him to bring a people together and that Jesus might bring them to God. And that this is through the blood of the everlasting covenant. That his blood paid the price required. It is solely the reason why he is to us the God of peace. God has always been a God of peace. It has always been his manner to minister peace and tranquility, order and safety. However, this blood is what made it possible for us to experience, without reservation, peace with God. He could for the first time, without reservation, accept those who come to him, and all this, by, by this blood of this everlasting covenant. So then, with the thought fresh in our minds that God is a God of peace, and it's man his manner to operate according to peace... It only makes sense then, it only stands the reason that he will make you perfect in every good work to do his will. That is the purpose of this peace. It's not simply to bring you to a place where God does not condemn you. You stand that you may walk. He, he has sent his son to make peace and he's raised him to minister this peace which has been made. This same God, the God of peace... He has gone to such great lengths to make the peace, so how could he not make an extended effort to give you grace to abound in this peace, to walk according to it? This is the manner of our salvation, in fact, that we move from one degree of peace to another, whether it be a reconciliation or further sanctification, a transformation or confirmation into the image of his Son. And he says, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. When considering these things, we must always remember the reason for which the Lord has done everything that he has done in our salvation. And that is that it pleased him to do it. We know in the scripture it says, but now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body as it has pleased him. Wherefore also we pray for always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And the words of our Savior himself, fear not, little flock, for it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. 
I've experienced this in the past that I've been discouraged and shrank back because I have lamented over the fact that I'm undeserving of the least of his favor and grace. And having that state, wondered whether or not the Lord really could be gracious unto me. But the thing that recovered me from that lack of hope and confidence was this very aspect of the truth, that God has saved you because he wanted to do it. Amen. Independently of any kind of worthiness on your part, he brought you into Christ because he wanted to do it. So he is forward to continue the work that he has done in you. He that hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Now there are two texts side by side in Ephesians 1, or in Ephesians and 1 John, which I never really connected in my mind until recently. And there are Ephesians 1, 5, <laughs> having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. And in 1 John 5, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. So then we can have confidence, brethren, in praying to the, our Lord to abound in this peace which he has made by the blood of the cross, that he hears us because this is his will concerning us. If we ask him to walk in the newness of life which we have been given, if we ask him to increase in our faith, if we ask him to give us grace to live in the heavenly places in which we have been set in Christ Jesus, if we ask to be further sanctified and more consecrated to his work, he hears us. Yeah. If there is such a thing as God's will for your life, it is this, that he has predestinated you unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ unto himself. Amen. So this morning as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, let us remember that the same God of peace who has raised Christ from the dead, who considered the blood of his cross sufficient to usher in this covenant, whose wrath was satisfied against the sin of the world on the cross of Christ, is satisfied in giving you to become a partaker of this salvation. So I'll leave you with these words from 1 Thessalonians 5. It says, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks for this, for this is the will of God in Christ concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesyings, prove all things, hold fast to that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who will also do it. Amen. Let's pray, brethren.